We have new information about the gruesome murder in San Carlos, where a mother of two young children was beheaded by an estranged boyfriend. Tonight, neighbors and the victim's family are mourning and painting a picture of domestic violence. NBC Bay Area's Robert Honda joins us now in San Carlos. And Robert, I understand you spoke with the victim's father. Well, that's right, Raj. Uh, it took a lot for the victim's father to come out here to see where his daughter died. He called the scene horrific and surreal. I feel like this is a horror movie that I need to wake up from. Today, Martin Castro Jr., father of the victim, showed up at the crime scene where a memorial to his daughter now stands. He then demanded somebody come out and wash away the blood that marked the place where his daughter was killed. None of us have eaten, none of us have slept, none of us have drank anything, none of us, nothing. We can't do, I can't even feel anything right now, except hurt. I'm empty. Martin also gave us these photos of his daughter, 27-year-old Karina Castro, who neighbors say had a volatile relationship with the man, now accused of beheading her yesterday, Jose Vandiato Solano. Investigators believe it began with the couple fighting inside her apartment yesterday morning around 1030. That fight then spilled outside, and that's where they say Solano used what sources are describing as a samurai sword to kill her all in front of three women passing by, while neighbors were quick to respond to the commotion. I saw the three ladies uh, crying and they're kind of like nervous and scared, and they're calling for help. So I, and I saw the guy jump inside his car and took off. Another neighbor, who says police were often at the home because of the couple's fights, recalled hearing Carino Castro talk about being scared of Solano. Also, the night before, she was pacing back and forth in front of the house like just the night before and I kind of heard she was talking real loud on her phone and she said feels like I got a target on my back. Just a short time ago Castro watched as the fire department washed down the scene of the killing. Now he wants justice. If he's willing to decapitate my daughter in broad daylight with her children right there he needs to die. What can you say about this man? Right? Because I, I saying this story earlier today, right? And I and I was wrestling with it. Cause I'm thinking like, what can I say that hasn't already been said, or that I haven't already said? Because I didn't did stories on domestic situations before. Not this drastic, cause this is by far the most extreme of circumstances. This man, who is a boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, however you want to call it, went to this woman's house. Maybe he lived there, but either way, it don't change the facts. The argument started in the house, spilled onto the streets, and he cut her head off with a sword. How does it get there? How does it get there? Because it's always signs before it get there. And I spoke on the signs before. Right now, understand the the, the uh, between men and women, things can get tense. You know, we think different, we move different. Everything, it's like we like polar opposites. So it's kind of hard understanding each other. But what we got to start doing as, as, as people, we got to start speaking up. We got to start intervening. Now, you can't stop nobody from dealing with whoever they want to deal with. You can't. It's, it's nothing you can do about it. People are grown. They're going to make their own decisions. But at least when you intervene and you make your voice heard, Rather it's wanted or unwanted, then you can sleep a little bit more comfortable 
with whatever situation play out. You don't have to have guilt. Because a lot of these situations, a lot of these family members, and I'm not saying this is what's going on in their family, but they deal with guilt. Because you can almost watch this shit and see how it's going to play out. Some arguments are worse than others. Some fights are worse than others. But it's them certain ones that you see and you know that shit don't look right. That's too far. That might can turn fatal. It's getting dangerous. And this goes for the people that's in the relationship. You know when it gets dangerous. It's not just a heated confrontation no more. Somebody might get seriously injured. And that's when one of the people, rather it be the man or the woman, got to make their departure, man. They got to separate. And even that can get crazy. We didn't seen that before. So that's why, like, I've, I've been watching this topic all day. And I'm thinking, like, yo, what, is, what can I say? What's the best way to go about this conversation? Or to shed light on this problem and what's going on? Because this problem is universal. No matter what race, age, it, it, it's universal. And, it, and it's so complex because don't know, you can't tell people what to do. People got to make their own decisions, man. But for him to decapitate this woman, damn. Now, you heard what the father said, man. That man said he haven't ate. He haven't slept. That shit got to hurt. It got to hurt. They have to identify your, your motherfucking child by the head. Because this dude couldn't control his anger. Couldn't control his emotions. Because the best thing to do is walk away, man. And I know it's easier said than done. Shit. Trust me. I know. When you when you in the heat of the moment and you're in the heat of the confrontation. But like I said, once you feel like it's getting to a point where it's elevated and this shit might get dangerous and somebody might die. Shit, man, somebody gotta make a decision for the team. And what you didn't hear in that video was the neighbor. You heard a brief, uh, you heard him speak briefly, but you didn't hear him say this. And he said, uh, uh, basically, you know, oh, I'm just sharpening my knife, you know, and then he kind of told the Russian guy, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, stop, right? I, I'm going to make, come back and kill her. So the day before, he said he overheard the dude talking to some Russian dude. He was sharpening a sword. So he already had plans on doing this. And that neighbor seen it. Didn't say nothing. I get it. Mind your business. That's, 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 that's what we do. That's what we supposed to do anyway. But this possibly could have been avoided. I don't think most people ever uh, would imagine that they would go to this extreme. Like, even when he's saying that, and saying him what he said, he probably still didn't believe it. Ain't no way he gonna do no shit like that. But people have. The worst thing you can do, yo, is, is take a motherfucker lightly. You know what I mean? The worst thing you can do is, is sit there and think that it won't happen. 
That's not going to happen to me. He won't do that. She won't do that. Because people will. All it takes is for them to get to that, that breaking point. And ain't no telling what a motherfucker do. We just had a, a, a situation in Cecil County where a guy killed him and his whole family. Five dead in the house. Murder, suicide. Nice residential neighborhood. Big house. Look like they living happily. But every once in a while, it's like something click. And when it click, people lose it. And it ends up like this. Or, or some resemblance of it. But it can be avoided. It can be avoided. If the person that's in a relationship notice when things getting too far, my guy back up. Go to counseling. I know that's not the slick thing to do. But it's it's ways to uh to come together, y'all have healthy conversations. Where everybody walk away from it with some type of understanding instead of just yelling and fussing. Cause that's what goes on more than likely in, in our relationships. Nobody is hearing the other person. Everybody want to be right. That's a major problem. Instead of instead of just coming together and finding a a, a common solution, you rather be right. But right doesn't solve anything. It may be, it might be, it might work for a person ego if that's what you went to, but it's not going to solve the problem. Because if you're right, and this person still don't understand, then all you're doing is moving in circles. You're going to have the same argument, the same debate, over and over and over again. Until some type of understanding is came to. Like I said, man, I, I, this fuck, this bad. It's worse than bad. But like I said, man, communication, rule of nation, man. And we got to get better at it. We got to get better at communicating. We got to get better at intervening as people. And not wanting to be the, oh, I don't get in their business. Let me tell you something, yo. And I learned this years ago. My, one of my mans got killed. I was just with him. And he told me the whole situation about how everything was going down. I felt the vibe. It wasn't right. It didn't sound right. I actually told him. I don't know, bro. I don't really, you know what I mean? That'll work, yo, but it don't really sound right. He left for me, got killed. Set up, robbed, and murdered. Now I'm left with the, 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 the thinking like, damn, y'all. I could have did more. He might have still been alive. And that's one of the worst pains that you can have. is is, is, is guilt. That's not something that you want to live with, man. That's that's that shit might not never go away. But what you can do is, from that time, whenever that happened, going forward, you can make sure you don't get put in that type of situation, man. Make sure you speak up when you see something ain't right. Let me know how y'all feel about this shit in the comments, man. Do y'all think this shit could have been avoided, man? What could have been done? It wasn't nothing that nobody can do. And what was going to happen was going to happen regardless. Man, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, man. I'm out.